Good evening. I'm Dale Thompson, and I'm the Deputy Director of the Department of Public Works. And I'm really excited to be back at my alma mater, and I wish they had this building here when I was at Morgan so many years ago because I probably would have spent a lot of time in this building and may have even changed my major, which was not business. But I think um, I would have definitely wanted to spend more time here. Welcome to the second installment of the DPW Small Business Development Training Program. This evening's gatherings includes a key combination of entrepreneurs and stakeholders. It is a unique partnership poised to, make, to take advantage of a great opportunity necessitated by overdue and neglected infrastructure modernization. Concurrently, it presents an extraordinary opportunity for certified and qualified minority women and disadvantaged businesses to perform and profit within the construction community. This is a pivotal night for those who comprise the 2017 class of the DPW Small Business Development Training Program, as you have now entered the gateway to prepare yourselves to compete for $3 billion in upcoming utility construction contracts. The mayor will be here, and unfortunately, she's running a little bit late, so we're going to go on ahead and start the program. The director of public works and members of his staff underscore the critical importance of this initiative, both to, to the quality of life for the citizens of Baltimore and to the growth of our local economy. You will hear from, from the director momentarily. But let me first acknowledge the presence of a few special guests who are joining us tonight. I would like to acknowledge the uh, panelists and the moderator, Courtney Billups. <laughs> Paul Taylor. Carolyn Cruz and Ron Collins of the Pyatt Group, who will be your moderator tonight. I'd also like to thank Louis Berger and some other VIPs that may be in attendance for helping to make this event possible. We'd also like to thank Morgan State University Chief of Staff Don Terry Veal and Denise McNeil for their assistance in making this wonderful venue possible. And we'd like to thank Dr. Ali Ambed, Associate Dean of the School of Business, for his support. And a sincere thanks to our media partner, WEAA 86.9 FM, and the Thompson's Catering for tonight's refreshments. And that's not my company. I'd like to introduce Director Rudy Chow, who is the director and has been the director of Public Works for six years. Three and a half years, but has been with DPW for six years, a little more than six years. The Department of Public Works is committed to small business readiness and for the inclusion in Baltimore City's utility construction projects. And who better to spearhead this initiative than Director Chow? Because He comes to share his thoughts regarding the access to this multi-billion dollar opportunity. Director Chow. Yeah. 
whoever is cheering for me back there, see me afterwards. <laughs> all right. Well, good evening, everyone. So happy to see all of you here. Just like the uh, deputy said, the mayor will join us momentarily, but we're going to get the program going. And uh, so I'm just going to spend a few minutes talking with you. So let's talk about why we are doing uh, this such a you know, so-called small business uh, development program. Well, we know the small business is really the driving engine for any economy, and particularly in Baltimore, as we continue to grow our city and uh, to uh, create more opportunities for entrepreneurs to join, uh, step in and join us. Knowing full well that uh, we have huge, huge infrastructure needs, right? Our underground infrastructure are approaching well over 100 years old. It's on average, it's about 80. When, so when I say 80, right, as being an engineer, when people say 80, that means there are a whole lot is way above 80, and there's a whole lot is under 80, and they come out to be 80, right? So, but we all know any assets that uh, uh, is more than 100 years old, we can't expect it to run forever. So there's a huge, huge need in terms of revitalization and updating uh, these underground infrastructure. We all know the city is under a federal sewer consent decree. So that means we are mandated to rehab our sewer system uh, to such a degree as agreed upon between us and the federal government. And on top of it, our aging water system, and uh, as well as our stormwater system, which under the stormwater we got the MS4 permit that looking at us in terms of all those work. So what I'm saying is that there are certainly ample work out there, and the reality is that the, the work doesn't never ever stops, right? So the, the department is undergoing a hundred year replacement cycle. So for example, our water mains, we got about 1,500 miles of water main in the city. And every year we want to replace, and we have about 15 miles. You do the math, it's about 100 years. So people say, well, gee, at the end of the 100 years, our work is done, right? No, right? Because then the first asset is 100 years old. We've got to start all over again. So the fact that you are spending time you, you, you're stepping up the play, says, you know what, I want to be involved with this infrastructure upgrade. You know, that, that itself, you're taking a positive step towards us working together as partners because the department has the work to be done and we need people to perform the work and that's you all. And the, the reality is that we never have enough as far as I'm concerned, enough contractors out there because we want to generate healthy competitions, right? Whether it's on the consultant side and or the construction side. So I applause you for the fact that you're stepping out of the play. You, you are clearly making the right choice to be here tonight. Now I'm going to leave up to others to talk about what exactly this program entails. And, and, the, and the many nights you're gonna be spending classroom and learning and so on and all that. But I guarantee you at the end, it will be a gratification, it will be satisfaction, it will be things that you can use and treasure for the rest of your business life, right? This is something that you can walk away with it, you have the knowledge, how do you actually do work with the Baltimore City? Now we, just like anyone else, municipalities and cities alike, we have our rules and regulations, there are procedures you must follow and so on and all that. You sort of have to know how to do the inner works, right? In order to be successful in terms of bidding. We're gonna be sharing a whole lot of those so-called knowledge and experiences with you. Now we certainly, uh, very, I'm certainly very proud of the growing number. Well, last year we graduated about 25, 26 entities. And this year, my understanding, we have 55 entities sign up to go through this program. That's in, in essence, is more than 100% increase. You know, that, that speaks volume. And that, that certainly is a, um, as far as I'm concerned, is a 
vote of confidence that we, we as a department, we as a city, very soon when, once the mayor arrives, you're going to hear the mayor's passion about growing, growing small businesses, helping small business, the minority firm, the women-owned, the disadvantaged firms to establish themselves to become a prime. That's our ultimate goal. We don't want you to be considered to be a, a sub forever and ever. Our goal is to grow you, to help you, to nurture you, to guide you, to give you all the tips that you need so one day you can become the prime that compete with the big boys. Because then you are a big boy or big girl on the block, right? So that's our goal. So the fact that you are here, that means we are all on the same page. So this is very, very happy to see that. Now, with in closing, I just want to say, you know, again, thank you. Certainly, I want to thank my staff. I want to thank the Morgan State for allowing us to use this beautiful space. I, I mean, I, I, the, the minute I park the car, the, the minute I'm driving up to Morgan State, I just admire the building here. And, and I think uh, Dale Thompson and our, my deputy said it very well. Had she known there's such a beautiful building here, she may just change her major, right? <laughs> and uh, certainly, you know, this, so I want to say thank you to Morgan State, and I want to uh, also thank many of the firms, the primes currently, that are stepping up, helping us, teaching, and assisting on all the 55 entities that is going to be joining this so-called program. And, and uh, that speaks a lot in terms of the partnership on the, on, the, on, the, on the city side, on the private industry side. This is about growing, it's about helping each other out. So enjoy tonight. I, 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 know, I know the hook is coming because I, I can actually go on forever for a long time, because <laughs> those of you know me. But uh, I want to um, uh, allow uh, others to speak and then and, and also I think there's a bit more networking by all means please you know uh, reach out shake hands with some of my staff some of the primes get to know each other introduce yourself and so on and all that so have a wonderful evening thank you thank you director Chow now, let's get down to business. As consent decree program managers and vice president for Lewis Berger, Arthur Jones Dove has high expectations for the program under his charge. Tonight's event is the result of a unique collaboration between Lewis Berger and the Department of Public Works. It is a model of the kind of partnership we continually seek to make our city a better place for the citizens we serve. Arthur comes now to provide a brief overview of the Small Business Development 2017 and anticipated outcomes for this year's class. As he does so, let me take this opportunity on behalf of Director Chow and the Department of Public Works to publicly acknowledge the Lewis Berger team for a job well done. Thank you, Louis Berger. <laughs> Arthur Jones Dove is a vice president at Louis Berger with over 20 years of experience providing project, program construction management, and engineering services to private and public clients. Arthur has served as program manager for East Baltimore Development and the City of Baltimore Department of Public Works with projects valued at over $2.5 billion. He is a strategic and visionary leader committed to successful execution and has driven development and execution of the DPW Small Business Development Training Program and other key initiatives. He holds a BA in Civil Engineering an MA in Environmental Engineering from the University of Maryland, and an MBA from George Mason University. He is a professional engineer licensed in Maryland, Virginia, and DC, a certified construction manager, 
a project management professional and program management professional. Arthur. Thank you. Thank you, Deputy Director Thompson. Good evening, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, and class of 2017. Rose Berger is honored to partner with the City of Baltimore to develop solutions for a better Baltimore, and in the process, impact the lives of small and local business owners. Tonight, I'd like to welcome the Small Business Development Class of 2017. I'd like to tell you about the team and partners. I'd like to briefly discuss the infrastructure and opportunities and talk about the wet weather consent decree program and briefly discuss the purpose of the Small Business Development Program. And then in closing, provide an overview of the class schedule and recognize the facilitators. And so again, class of uh, 2017, welcome. The team has worked really hard to assure your participation in tonight's reception slash networking event. Tonight was supposed to be the first day of class, but as we sat together, we thought it would be fitting for you to meet the facilitators, understand the commitment from the city at the highest level, and then get to network with each other. Because when we put classes like this together, we take small businesses, we take big businesses, and we bring them all together to ensure that we can, at the end of the day, make sure that you can convert and uh, get business within the city of Baltimore. And so like Mr. Chow said, we have about 70 participants, 55 plus companies that have registered for this year and counting. Um, and so we, we wanted to, we wanted to make, so last year, I wanted to give you a quick, quick stats. So last year, out of the 27 participants, we had over 25% of the class that are either pre-qualified, been certified, or successfully bid on projects with the city of Baltimore. Today, nearly a million dollars in contracts have been awarded and more M women and minority disadvantaged businesses are following in their steps. And so when we put classes like this together, at the end of the day is to make sure that you can convert. When we measure the team, when we look at success, we want to make sure that you convert. Mr. Chow highlighted the partnership between Lowe's Berger, Morgan State University, um, a sub consultants, as we manage the program, we have about nine subconsultants that help to support us on the consent decree program. At this point, I'd like to recognize those firms. We have Diversity Intelligence, Keith Timmons and Owens, and Owen Tompkins, the Pi Group, Vanessa Pi, Kafra Engineering, Phil ba Val Bates, Peer Consultant, uh, Christian uh, Davis Venn, Envira Civil Engineering, Yomi of Sober, and Winstead Management. With Huron with Winstead Management, and Angad Ahuja with Mercado, with DME, and Bill Mercado with Mercado Engineering, and Larry Smith with Savin Engineering. And so, again, as we work and put this together, we make sure that we work with the MBWB. And I'd like to give special recognition to Diversity Intelligence and to the PIA Group. They are local, homegrown businesses that boots on the ground, went around to make sure that we can get you in the class. And so, could you recognize the sub-consultants, the PIA Group, Diversity, and all the small businesses? And so Mr. Chow talked about the infrastructure opportunities. And so if you look at DBW and fiscal year 2018 alone, they have about $1,800 million in construction. 
the 2018-2023 fiscal uh, CIP is $2.5 billion. And then the city is working on a consent decree program, which I'm the program manager for. We have about a billion dollar plus of work between now and 2030 that needs to be completed. And so there's significant opportunity. The purpose of this, of this program, like I said, when we put the program together, we wanted to make sure we, what we learned from last year, we worked on those things and made sure that we improved and made it better for you. And so we're looking for businesses who wants to enhance their knowledge within the construction industry, especially utility rehabilitation work and related support services. So we're targeting companies who, want, who are specialized in, in concrete construction, construction program slash project management, excavating, landscaping, pipeline installation, post-construction cleanup, scheduling, sediment and erosion control, sewer construction, site work, traffic control and underground utilities, and any ancillary related work to utilities. Again, our goal is to make sure prime contractors engage with subcontractors. We want subcontractors to build their resumes, and we want you to understand how to work within the city of Baltimore. And so, what I want to do at this time is, and Mr. Chow also alluded to this, with more participation from the small businesses, we get more competition, and we get, the city gets more cost-effective work. And so, in closing, what I wanna do is, I wanna make sure I talk about the classes moving forward. So the next set of class, class starts in September 19th at Montebello, which is just down the street from here. And so, today will be considered the kickoff. What we'll do is, we'll give you presentation slides. So the first day of class, you'll have a binder full of information of all the presentation, and we'll give you slides for today's presentation. So a little more detail on what I touched on. And then, um, the next class, we have two sets of classes in September. We have the MBW DB application, uh, Courtney Billups, We'll be teaching that. Courtney, could you raise your hand so they could recognize you? Courtney is in the back. And Courtney is the chief solicitor for MBU. And then we have the City of Baltimore pre-qualification by uh, Michael Augens. He's board of commissions. Michael. Next class, we have doing business with the city procurement. That's Donora Houston Burgi. She is with the Department of Public Works, Contract Administration. <laughs> and then we have Letitia Griffin. She is with DOT, Contract Administration. She's in the back. And so that takes you in October, you get to work with the city, you get to understand how they do business. And then we go to October, where we have construction best practices with Glenn Stoffel, with Peer Consulting, and he's not here today, but he'll be there in October. And then we have an accounting class, understanding accounting and how to balance your books. We have Tim Abercrombie, who's the principal of Abercrombie LLC. Tim, if you raise your hand. And then we have Estimating and Bidding by Robert DePonte, Vice President of Mentor Industries. <laughs> and then we have Essentials of Project Management, Bill Natale, who's a Senior Project Manager with Louis Berger. <laughs> and then we have um, Scheduling, Christina Baltazar, who's the Chief of Project Controls with the Department of Public Works. <laughs> then we have Contract Administration, a contractor's perspective. We have Bob Steer with uh, SAK Construction, Bob. 
And then we have Robert Harrington, who's the president of RE Harrington. And then in October, the last class is bonding and working capital. We got Timothy L. Smoot, who is the senior vice president of Meridian Management Consult Management Group. And so again, what we've done in October is essentially take a class of the essentials that you need to operate your business. We've taken contractors, we've taken professionals who can teach that, we've taken the city. At the end of the day, when you submit your schedules uh, on a construction job, the chief of project controls is the person reviewing it to make sure that you're in compliance. And so, and then we all know in order to get certain amount of work, you need to be bonded and you need to understand what those requirements are. And so again, we're equipping you with information to make sure that you're ready to hit the ground running. And then in November, after you have learned all this new information, or we get into the marketplace, are you ready to compete? And Ron Collins, who's a marketing director for the Pyatt Group, Ron? In essence, what he'll do is he'll package all this information. By the time you leave the room, you should have your elevator speech ready to go to go get work, right? And I won't tell you everything else that he has in place for you. But, but again, at the end of the day, when you finish these classes, we want you to be ready. And, and the way the classes are set up, I looked at the, the roster of 70 businesses. You had people who just started three years ago. You have businesses that have been in in business for about 28 plus years. And so what happens is there's a mix. You get to interact with your partners, you get to learn, you get to create relationship. So some of you may walk in the class, you may know more than the facilitators, even though we have the best facilitators, but it's that exchange of information between the class that is extremely important. And so again, by the time you finish the class, you would have learned something or you would have imparted something to your, to your uh, somebody who is a couple steps behind you. And then finally, we have OSHER 10 hour construction industry training. And this is by SAK Construction. Um, don't have the name in front of me. Uh, Pierre, who, who do we have for SAK? Uh, Harry Miller. Harry Miller, excuse me. So, so we have Harry Miller. And, and for you, for most of your construction, the 10 hour construction OSHA training alone is a couple thousand dollars. And so the value within the training that we have set up is significant. At the end of the day, we have put the city's positioning the small businesses because at the end of the day, you increase competition and you get to pay taxes in the city and increase and develop the economy of the city. And so I just wanted to share that with you tonight. And at this time, I'd like to hand it over to Dale to um, take over. Okay, I'd like to bring Director Chow up to introduce Mayor Pugh. Good evening again. Well, our, our mayor just arrived. Well, certainly everyone knows her, right? She really doesn't need introduction. As I said earlier, she is fully committed and certainly she is asking her cabinet members and like myself to embrace development of small business and so on and all that. So uh, I'd like to invite the mayor to come up and say a few words uh, and encourage all of you to participate. Thank you. Thank you, uh, First, let me say thank you all for participating. Last year, I handed out some 27 certificates, and one of the things that I said to Rudy is that we got to get more people in this room because it is about creating opportunity and expanding opportunity and being more diverse and inclusionary. Now, I was telling someone earlier uh, today that I just left uh, Laguna Beach uh, where I was speaking to 400 African-American heads of companies and corporations and sitting on Fortune 500 boards across the country. And some of you all probably know the name Shalonda Ryan, uh, who created several programs on television. And one of the things that she said was that when we keep, we keep saying diversity as if it's something unusual, 
and diversity is really normal. And we need to be talking about being more normal and steadfast in our approach. Because when I walk into rooms and all I see are one part of our population, not inclusive of the other, the question I ask myself is, what's going on? In a city that is 67% African American, and then about 8% Latino, and 3% Asian, I think we ought to be able to do better. We should not be sitting at the city level asking the question, why aren't we being more expansive? Why don't we have participation from more people of color? Where are women in this participation? And why are we still in this day and age trying to figure it out? But I do know that through Director Ruby Chow, uh, the president of the city council, Jack Young, I don't know if he's been here yet, uh, Dale Thompson of, of DPW, the deputy director, Paul Taylor, the mayor's office of minority and women-owned business development, Arthur Jones Dove, SBD program manager, Don Terry Real, chief of staff at Morgan State University, and Mark Hassan, senior VP of Lewis Berger, Courtney Billups in my office, MWBOO, Michael Ogin, Boards and Commissions, Wayne Frazier, MMCA, and Pledge Jones. That's why this effort is taking place. I urge you all to continue to expand the pool of African American and other minorities in this city. We've got billions of dollars in contracts. Government does two things. It provides services, and it provides opportunity. And while there are still com communities that complain that they're not getting adequate service, there are even more people complaining about our lack of diversity and inclusion. You know, we cannot do the work that we are responsible for doing. We're under a federal mandate to fix our water system, our piping system. That's going to yield billions of dollars in opportunity. And how can we do that without making sure that we're educating and providing opportunity for others in our community to participate? So while I'm excited to see that this class has doubled over the previous year, I'm more excited that you all get to understand the work and the opportunities for you all to participate in. And so I ask you again to not only take advantage of this opportunity, to, but to spread the word that others should also be taking advantage of this opportunity. Two, we've been awarding contracts worth over a million dollars and all kinds of opportunities that are available. And so as you learn about these contract opportunities, please make sure that you put yourself in a position to take advantage of those opportunities. And it's not just here in the Department of Public Works. We've gotten nearly $40 million to knock down border of houses in our city. And as I said to the Department of Housing, no excuses, no excuses. We waited too long for properties that have been boarded up for decades in our communities, I can point to blocks where border houses have existed for decades. And the news media asked me the other day, was I serious when I said sue me? Because as far as I'm concerned, if you left the house in the city boarded up for over a decade, you have no desire or commitment to help us bring about the change that is necessary. You know, when I took down the Confederate statues, somebody asked me, why did I do it so fast? And more importantly, why did I feel obligated to do it? And I'm, I'm saying this because I want to say the same thing in a different context. I have the right and the responsibility to protect the citizens of Baltimore according to the charter of the city. We have 14,000 board of houses in the city that we own, and another 10, 12, or 14,000 that somebody else decided to just leave standing in our neighborhoods. And I don't know if you've seen some of them. They're so bad that they're falling inside 
you know, they're so bad that we have the X's on them that says that if, they, if a fire starts, don't go in it. Just let it burn. Um, that's destructive. It's unhealthy. It's unsafe. And I have a responsibility to protect the citizens of Baltimore. So I've said, tear them down. But when you say that, what you're also doing is saying there is an opportunity for others to do business in our city. That's $29 million that should be spent in the next year. And so there should be participation by other members of our communities. So while you're developing here, what I'm saying to you, it's not just the Department of Public Works, it's other agencies. When I think about the money that's gonna be spent in transportation, it's another agency that creates opportunities for people to do business with the city. We've got to continue to reach out. We've got to continue to pull folks in because we need you as much as you may decide that you need to be working with us. I want you to have these opportunities. I want us to be more inclusive. I need us to be more diverse. And I need us to act as though it's normal. It's normal to be diverse. It's normal to be inclusive. It's not exceptional. It's what we should be doing. So again, please take advantage of this opportunity, and I wish everyone well, and more importantly, I'm grateful for your attendance. Thank you.